I really don't know how to say this, and I don't want you to get the wrong idea or anything, but I'm, I'm not going to kill you. I mean, I'm, re I'm really not going to kill you, really. It's just, oh, shit. Um, I, I, I guess what I mean to say is uh, I'm a psycho killer. Huh? I'm a mad slasher. I, I kill people. I don't believe it. What? Me too. Get out! Alright, welcome to Devlin's Domain. Uh, I've got a movie today from Vinegar Syndrome. It is the limited edition, limited to 2,000 copies, uh, Psychos in Love. Now, I've heard of this movie a little while back, uh, n not recently, maybe like a couple years ago, but uh, the title really caught me, it, like it really hooked me. Uh, it's, it's a great title, I think, and the picture I saw, the original image I saw, wasn't, wasn't that. It was like a, uh, wedding scene with, like, cake toppers and, and, you know, one of them's got, like, a chainsaw, like, cutting the head off another little figure or whatever. It was, it was kind of funny, but the, the, between the title and the imagery of the initial cover that I saw, like, I was really interested in seeing this movie, and, uh... Then I found out that Vinegar Syndrome was going to put it out, uh, so I, instead of like buying the DVD and seeking it out that way, I was just going to stick around and wait for this to drop, and it finally has. So I finally get to watch this, and this slipcover is the shit. This is like one of the best slipcovers I've seen uh, Vinegar Syndrome put out. It's double thick, heavy duty, and these things go for a lot of money. Like they're you know especially since they're limited. Uh, like I got the like sweet sugar that they put out, you know. I paid like 20 bucks when it came out on, on the mid Black Friday sale or whatever they call it. Uh, and now it's like people are asking $200 on eBay. It's kind of crazy. I wouldn't pay that much for it, but I'm glad I got it for the price I did pay. And I'm going to hang on to it because you know, it's a good movie. Uh, and hopefully I could say the same thing about this one. It, it has like a, it looks like almost like a sticker right here in the middle and it looks like there's something written behind it. So I'm wondering if this actually comes off the middle. I'm not going to try. I'm just going to leave it like it is. But uh, apparently the film is about a strip club owner and a manicurist who end up getting along very well and find out that they're both sort of like bloodthirsty serial killer type people. And they encounter this other guy who's like a cannibal and then they have to orchestrate, you know, some means to, to feed this guy's needs. Uh, tons of special features on here. Uh, I'll give you a look at it here in a second, but... Guys, you know, you got commentary tracks, you got interviews, you got making of, uh, you got Q&A, uh, behind the scenes photo galleries, uh, extended scenes, outtakes, short films, reversible artwork, which hopefully has the, the one I was just talking about, uh, so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, this thing's friggin' loaded, man. Let's open it up. Alright, there's a closer look. I, man, I just love the like how they get the little cuts. Man, that's pretty cool. The bloody teeth, and there's this. It's kind of like raised. You can feel like a, a raise right there, and it looks like there's something written behind it. So I'm like, it seems like this could come off, but I don't know. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm just gonna leave it on there. But there's your synopsis, and look at that long list of special features. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. It's packed, man. It is uh, just going by these steals. It has like this cheap, low budget look. Made in 1986. And same stuff on the inside. You got a little booklet in there. Cool. There's your disc. Yep, there's the cover I'm talking about. Well, I guess they weren't cake toppers. My memory, <laughs> my memory wasn't quite accurate. I just remember like little cake topper figures like doing this, but uh, it's actually like people. It looks like so. That's still a really cool cover though. Really dig that cover. Uh, let's see what we got here. There's another disc, the DVD with the alternate artwork on there. 
Hopefully I don't have to censor anything out of this book. Almost. That's cool. They don't usually put like little buckets like this in their releases, but this one came in one, so that's pretty awesome. Maybe I'll read. Maybe I won't. But uh, I'm going to pop it in and uh, let you know if this is good or uh, bad. Let's go watch it. Well, the Psychos in Love ends up being completely absurd. Uh, not, not really surprised. I didn't really know what the tone of the movie was. I knew it was going to be a comedy just because you know, it was advertised as a comedy. Uh, but like the cover art, it looks like a serious film. This, this is, uh, if I just saw this and didn't really know anything else about it, I'd think this was like a total like, serious gore film. Because uh, this is a badass cover. Uh, the, the original cover that I showed you, that's actually more accurate to like the tone of the film. Uh, you have two people, and at the beginning of the movie, you kind of get like a montage of, you know, the man goes on his dates and kills those women, and then the woman goes on her dates and kills those men. And they eventually find each other, and they're kind of hitting it off, and they they both have a distaste for grapes. And this is the the common thing that they, they find that bonds them. And he decides that he's not going to kill her. And he, and he lets her know that he's a serial killer and that he usually kills his dates. <laughs> but since she doesn't like grapes either, he's going to spare her. And then she, she kind of like, oh yeah, I'm a serial killer too. And uh, this probably wasn't the way I would write it. I would probably have it like a circumstantial uh, thing where, you know, maybe she finds out he's got bodies in his closet or something like that and that's how they find out that they're both serial killers but uh they went with just like all out hey yeah i'm a serial killer <laughs> so but which seems ridiculous but you know with the tone of the movie it's a ridiculous movie uh like they get together and they start going and killing each you know killing people separately and, and then she wants to do it together uh but there, like there's for example there's a scene where he poisons like this girl's like in a spa or something and uh you know, sitting there hanging out naked, and he's, like, going to bring her a glass of wine, and he's going to poison her. And so instead of just, like, putting, like, a little bit of poison in the wine and mixing it together, like, he gets, like, a handful of, like, powdered poison and, like, crams it in there and turns it into, like, a mush. And, like, and she just, like, looks at it. She's like, well, I'm just going to drink it. <laughs> like, there's, it's, like, completely solid. There's so much powder in there. It's, it's so funny. And uh, there's, like, a cannibal guy. He's like a plumber, and he frequents the strip club that the uh, the main character uh, Joe runs. And uh, he uh, he's like a cannibal. He like you know he he gets like calls to go work on people's like pipes and stuff, and then he like kills them and eats them. And it's showing him like cooking uh, like a whole hand in a pile of broccoli that's like overflowing on a on a pan in the stove. Uh, and he's just gonna eat the whole hand by itself. It doesn't even look cooked when he has it on the plate. It's just like a lot of little goofy stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, they they absolutely hate grapes. Uh, it, it's sort of like a love story. Like like the final scene, they're just like bickering and you know like a real life couple. You know that's been around you know together for a long time, just bickering about shit. Uh, it, it's a fun movie. It's it's got a lot of gore. It's got a lot of you know, boobs in it, because, you know, the Joe's victims are all female, and they're all naked when he kills them, either in a shower, or, like, on the verge of having sex, or something like that. Not a whole lot of actual sex in this, uh, to be honest. And then, uh, Kate is the female in this, it, uh, the girlfriend, uh, possibly soon-to-be wife, and, uh, she's a manicurist in... It says attractive young manicures. I didn't think she was all that attractive. Maybe it is the hair. She's really, really short, like a dude's hair. Like, I don't know, like a... I don't know. It's, it's not a good haircut. So maybe if she had longer hair, it would like look different. Maybe, or, I don't know. It didn't It didn't work for me. I didn't think she was all that good looking. Uh, not that it matters, because uh, he wasn't good looking either. <laughs> she was actually probably out of his league. So, uh, I guess attractive compared to him. Uh... But a lot of the other girls that he got with were way better looking. And but she she does a good job playing the role she's playing, and she gets with like these guys, and she's like doing their nails and stuff, and they're like just weird stuff. Like they're bragging about their position in society, and like oh you know I'm 
I might be older, but you know, I'm in a good position for an attractive young lady like you. Like, I'm a weatherman. <laughs> I'm gonna make it big one day. You know, shit like that. Uh, she can't stand these people. She kills them. It's great. There, there's like a lot of really creative kills in this, and, and they're all different. You know, they don't kill anybody really the same way. There's like one scene that's kind of gross with the. Uh, they finally, like, like it seems like the cannibal storyline with the plumber is going to be like a big deal according to the synopsis. He doesn't really like encounter them really until like towards the end of the movie where he's pretty much like that their sinks clogged up from all the body parts. They're trying to shove down the disposal and they call him over to like unclog the sink. And he, it's so gross. He's like, you know, twisted off the pipe on the bottom and then like all this like sink sludge that's built up in there with like, fingers and blood and all this other shit starts coming out and he's like oh yeah finger and he's like sucking on it he's like licking the blood off his fingers it's just so gross mainly because it comes out of sink not not from what it actually is but just sink sludge grosses me out and uh you see my like ingesting those yeah. but uh <laughs> so he he's like getting excited because there's like body parts in here he kind of picks up that they're like murderers and they're disposing of bodies and stuff so he's like pulls a gun on him he's gonna give him the ultimatum like he can I can kill you now and eat you, or you can like kill people for me and and give them to me for food. So he's trying to cut a deal with them towards the end of the movie. Uh, it's not really that big part of the story. Uh, the only real story in this is that they they fall in love. It's it's a romance story, and just all this blood and gore is kind of like an accessory to the the main romantic storyline. So overall, it's pretty pretty damn funny pretty good it's not it's not like laugh out loud, loud funny and, and there's like uh there's like fourth wall breaking stuff that happened here i didn't really get why it was in there like you know the the sound guy's microphone gets in the scene uh, and she like swats it out of her out of her face and then there's like one where they're pumping blood like the crew guys are pumping blood onto the scene and they're like arguing with them like i quit too much blood quit squirting like, like it, it wasn't done enough to become a, sh a thing that was important in the film. So, and it wasn't even all that funny when it happened. So, I don't know why they did that. Uh, and then there was, it, there's part of it that did, did seem familiar to me. Like, there's like these uh, segments where they're like narrating the story as they go along uh, and they're each in a room. It, it sort of reminds me of like a reality TV, like confessional, where they're just like in a room talking to a camera about what's going on. And uh, some 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 of that like jarred my memory. Like I've seen this before somewhere. I don't know if I saw like a trailer a long time ago, and that was part of the trailer or something. But yeah, I've seen that before. Uh, yeah, it was, it was it's worth watching. It's worth buying if you're into like horror comedy stuff. I'm, I'm not huge into horror comedy or comedy in general, but this one was worthwhile. Uh, it's probably like on. Ranks high on my list of top horror comedies. There's not a lot that I like, so... <laughs> uh, you know, like Evil Dead and stuff like that. I love all that, but... Yeah, it's kind of few and far between when I come across one that's, like, really worthwhile. Uh, special features-wise, God, this took a lot of time <laughs> out of my day. Because there's, like, interviews. Uh, the director's talking about how, you know... People keep saying he ripped off certain, like, horror movies and stuff. But he, he, he says that there's more Marx Brothers... And Charlie Chaplin into this film than anything else, as far as inspiration goes. And I, you know, I'm not really familiar with Mark Spillers and stuff, so I can't really say if that's accurate. But uh, you know, it does have like its own style. Like, uh, he, yeah, I think he says he, Monty Python contributed to some of the uh, inspiration. And I could kind of see that. Uh, just, just awkward circumstances and just really random weird shit that happens. Uh, uh, the his, the director's name is Corman Gorman. Beckard. I uh, hope I said that right. But, uh, yeah, he says this is, like, one of his favorite films that he's done. Uh, I haven't... I don't think I've really seen anything else he's made, so I can't really have an opinion on that. And there's an interview with the star, Carmine Copi Bianchi, or I probably ruined that name, too. Uh, apparently they're, like, friends, and they've done a few projects together. Uh, it's a pretty good interview there, and there's a Q&A with, with both of them, and that's about... 45 minutes. The interviews is like themselves are like 10 to 15 minutes. The Q&A is like 45 minutes. It's probably the longest special feature on here. 
there's like a 13 minute making of featurette showing this like our, you know old footage of like on the set and stuff, uh, interviewing some of the actors and actresses. Uh, some of the, you know, like the girls that get killed, you know, they don't have like huge parts, but they have, uh, important parts, you know, somebody's got to die. Uh, I didn't really go through the pictures and stuff. There's like a couple photo galleries. I looked at some of the outtakes and extended scenes. Uh, you know, not a whole lot there that's new. There's like alternate versions of scenes and stuff like that. Nothing really, uh, yeah, mind blowing or anything there. Uh, the alternate credit sequence, again, nothing really to write home about, and, uh, there's highlights from the stage play, uh, they're, they're doing a play at the, uh, theater that Stuart Gordon run, or used to run, and, uh, there are some clips of that, it seems really bad, but, I'm, I, you know, it's like scenes out of context, like, if, you, if I'd seen the whole play in its entirety, maybe, and maybe even live, I'd have a different opinion of it, but just seeing video clips of parts of the play just seemed really lame to me, and not all that funny. Uh, like, the musical numbers they played were pretty bad, in my opinion, but whatever. I'd rather just watch the movie. Uh, and then there's, like, uh, short films on here, which, you know, they're, they're, most of them are pretty short. Uh... Nothing really, they're all kind of like little short artsy bits of stuff. Uh, the only one that really stood out to me was called Pears, and that was just 33 seconds of boobs. So, <laughs> that's the only one that really, uh, was like, hey, boobs. Uh, but every, all the other ones, they were okay, but, you know, like I said, they're just little artsy weird things. Uh, you, you can take them or leave them, they don't really need to be on here. But it's, I guess it's a nice little extra. Uh, so you got your money's worth. Uh, but overall, good experience with Psychos in Love. I'll leave the link in the description of Vinegar Syndrome or Diabolic DVD. You can find it there as well. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, if you want the slipcover, I'd, I'd definitely go to Vinegar Syndrome's main site just to make sure you get that before they run out. Uh, hopefully, they still have some by the time I post this video. So uh, if uh, you like this video, hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you want to see more and stick around because I got uh, some more Vinegar Syndrome. I got a trip with Teacher. I got a Orgy of the Dead. I got some era video releases, uh, Severin's got some stuff I got over there. Uh, yeah, all kind of good shit. So stick around, keep watching. See you guys.